Good morning, Dr. Shirley. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. But we are fortunate that we have two speakers again for today. We have two featured speakers for today. And so, um, welcome once again to the Aral online lecture series. Good morning, Charmers. Welcome to the Community Habit of Action Research on Mondays. Okay. While we are doing the lecture you might want to type in where you are participating from okay so without much ado i now call on dr bing prudente to introduce today's featured speakers dr bing good morning okay thank you dr shirley good morning everyone welcome to another session of charm brought to you by dlsu leader and aral so we have two uh, budding action researchers who will share their action research experiences with us this morning, and I'd like to introduce them. So let me start with the lady first. So uh, we have for today, uh, Miss Maria Teresa Suset P. Balgos. She graduated from Marinol College, Quezon City. Now it's known as Miriam College with a degree in AB International Studies. She completed her academic units in MA in Special Education from the University of Philippines in Diliman. And she later on graduated from De La Salle University with a master's degree in education major in English language teaching. Ms. Balgos also completed her academic units in MA in media literacy education at Paulins Institute of Communication in Asia. She has been a faculty member of De La Salle Santiago Zobel for 36 years and has occupied several administrative positions in the course of her service. She is currently the Director for Academic Services Department and for the past five years has been a volunteer media and information literacy teacher in the senior high school of De La Salle Subel's brother Rafael Donato FSC Knight High School. So can you just uh, switch on your video and wave for the uh, participants, okay? Thank you, Ms. Balgos. Welcome. And uh, the next speaker is a gentleman, another faculty member from De La Salle Subel, uh, Mr. Fritz M. Ferran. He is a senior high school research teacher uh, and uh, he graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics for Teachers from Philippine Normal University, Manila, as cum laude. He enrolled in Master of Science in Mathematics at De La Salle University, Dos Marinas and currently in his thesis writing in pure math under the Master of Science in Mathematics program. He was awarded the best paper presenter when he presented his paper in graph theory entitled On the Maximum Number of Distinct Paths in a Complete Graph of Order N. He was also awarded Virtus et Excellentia Award, the highest award given to a graduate student who maintained exceptional academic achievement while performing service to the community during his stay in the university. And also a recipient of the Leadership Award, which recognizes his effort in extending his services to, to his community. Oh, I'll give okay. the virtual floor now to Mr. Fritz Ferran. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Ayan po. So allow me to share my screen. I hope you can hear me po clearly. Yes, you can be heard clearly. Okay, thank you. Ayan po. So allow me to share my screen. Yeah, so I hope you can now see my slides. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you, Pa. So let me start. Uh, good morning, Charmers. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for gracing us with your presence today. Uh, I'm Sir Fritz. Oops. Ayan po. Medyo gumagalaw tong ano. Ayan, so I'm Sir Fritz, the research and mathematics teacher of the Lasas and Chavez Rubel. And... Actually, I'm one of the proud uh, products po ng STAR program. So if you attended the webinar or the 
yeah, the, the charm or the presentation of Miss Janet last time on sustaining teacher or teacher leadership and academic vitality. So I'm one of her participants. Po. So thank you, Miss Janet, for being my guiding star and in that program. And I also I'm I, I am also honored to be mentored by Dr. Prudente and Dr. Aguha in this journey. So thank you so much, po, Dr. Prudente, Dr. Aguha. And so actually, uh, as a math major po kasi and yeah, currently taking the 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 master's thesis in graph theory, which is very pure. Uh, I have this less interest before in conducting applied research papers or even uh, action research. And however, when the invitation came through my email uh, as sent by Miss Janet, parang <clears throat> na, na, na intrigue ako and I would like to also join, especially that I'm a research teacher and I want to experience uh, how to be guided as uh, as knowing myself as a beginner in the journey of something that I am not expert with, that is writing an action research. Because when when I I transferred to Zubel, I was assigned to teach research to STEM students, and by nature our papers are actually uh, scientific by nature. So hindi ako na experience ng kagaya ng action research. Kaya <laughs> ayon. So at first I thought the the program was easy, <laughs> just like probably some of my participants as well. I thought it was easy. However uh upon i continue with the journey on the star program i realized na hindi pala siya ganun kadali so it's it's different from teaching research uh, compared to i'm the one writing the paper so madali lang mag-comment sa students eh but when i received the comments from doc aguha doc prudente iba pala yung feeling na i really have to provide a quality word so and i i would like to share this with you later po and allow me to share that while i present the results of my paper allow me to insert some of my learning experience in this journey and po and yeah, I just really have to trust the process and of course, dedicate some time kasi nga busy tayo as educators but still we have to dedicate some time and lastly to trust our and listen to our uh, advisors, Doc Aguha and Doc Prudente. Ayun po. Actually, sa start po nung uh, ito, class namin sa Zubel which, is, which was July 6, medyo early po compared dun sa ibang schools, uh, nag-try na rin po ang gumawa ng kasulat ba? ng YouTube channel where some of my materials can be viewed and even uh, website po. So maybe later, uh, I will show you some of my materials that I've been using in my action research which can be uh, viewed here in the future. Ayan. So first of all, also, I would like to know each and every one of you. So I prepared na rin po ako ng mga links ahead of time. Pero nasa ilalim po yung links pero wag po matakot. Hindi po lahat yung survey. Okay. So actually, dalawa lang po yun. So for you to easy remember everything, so it's just Google Forms, Lesson playlist one, then change them to two, three, four, and five. So yung nakawide po lahat yan, those are the materials that I uh, made and I would like to share with you. And of course, after this webinar or lecture or presentation, you can still access them para hindi malimutan. So I would like to ask uh, to know everyone first by accessing this link. Nalala po yung ating link, so let me go there. Para live tayo po. Ayan. So, mayroon tayong three responses for now. So, ayan po, 25%. Ayun, nagbabago po siya. <laughs> so, 500% lahat taga Luzon po. Ano? Naka-blue tayo ngayon. Lahat taga Luzon. Six responses. Okay. So, mayroon tayong yung blue, yung others. May others po pala. Marami yung others. Ano? Hala. Ano kaya yung others? Junior high school educator, 25%. 25% yung senior high school educator. Meron tayong administrator po. Administrators. Okay. Meron tayong others. Ala, ang daming others. Hindi ko nag- Hindi ko alam po yung others. Ayan. So, ayan po. Welcome to this asham pa lang. So, ito po yung link natin. So, gf slash dash lp1. Ayan. So, welcome po and thank you for, ayan, gracing us with your presence today. Probably the others are putting their answers in the chat box. Okay, hindi ko po kasi nare-read. Ah, sige po, so I have to proceed. Since I only have like 40 to 45 minutes. So this is the outline of my presentation today. So first is I would like to share how I look for a topic for my action research. Kasi when I joined the program, uh, I don't really expect na gagawa pala ng paper doon. So I just want to learn, I just want to be trained. Pero may output pala which is a paper. <laughs> Ayan po. So I would like to share you how I actually identify a topic. And later po, I will be asking you also to participate 
kung ano yung mga issues that I look into and I focus my attention to addressing that issue sa classroom or yeah, to improve yung learning uh, delivery po sa classroom, especially nagkaroon tayo ng transition from face-to-face, abrupt transition, kagad yun, abrupt transition from face-to-face to online. In, in our case, online distance learning po sa Zubel. So, I guess if there's something to solve, kailangan muna ma-deliver yung lessons bago yung ibang parts para sa akin. Ano po. So, I would like to convey first what, I, I would like to find a way first, a bridge. I would like to construct a bridge that that connects teachers and students para magkaroon ng smooth delivery po dun sa lesson. So I would like to address that. And I, would, I, would, I will invite you guys to, to answer the survey. So just change yung one sa dulo ng two na lang. Okay? And after that, mabilis lang po to. So after that, allow me to present my, my action research and of course insert some experience and Q&A. So ito po yung mga materials that I will be sharing with you later. Ayan. So first is, ayan. So continue po tayo. So how did I think of a topic or look for a topic for my action research in the STAR program. So may I ask everyone po para na to answer this survey form? Actually, one question lang naman po ito. Mabilis lang. So bit.ly slash gf-lp2. So it's more on the perceived DLT adoption challenges. So DLT refers to digital learning technology. So for your reference po, based on the systematic review of Granik and its colleague, his colleague, uh, reviewing related articles from 2003, uh, digital learning technology are those educational apps, web-based platforms like learning management systems, Schoology, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, ayan. teacher design tools, yung self-paced materials po natin, and video conferencing app. So upon answering the questionnaire, check po natin. Ano yung mga challenges that you actually perceive Kung gumagamit po kayo ng mga tools na nabanggit ko, so what are the challenges that you perceive in utilizing those technologies? If not, then what do you think will be the challenges that you will be expecting once you try using them? Okay, so mayroon tayong mga indicators po doon. So faith in technology, excessive workload, technical support. Ito yung mga challenges din po na na-encounter ng students. So in the first two weeks po ng aming online distance learning, nag-observe kami. Okay, nag-meeting din po yung mga faculty. Ayan po. So, tapos we asked the students what are their problems because we would like to address that uh, challenges para magkaroon po ng smooth uh, delivery doon sa uh, ngayong school year. Very challenging talaga yung school year. Secondly, medyo limited yung time namin for preparation. Kasi maaga po kami July 6. Ayan, so ito yung mga challenges natin. So, sige, kopyahin ko na lang muna para makita po natin ng buo. So allow me to go to my Ayan. So para makita po natin later. So live po talaga siya. Sorry po. Okay, so babalikan ko po yung result na to later po. So allow me to continue. So yun po yung mga ginamit kong uh, information to actually look for a topic. So I believe that uh, very challenging po yung online distance learning. And sabi ko nga kanina, uh, if there's something that I would like to address in my action research that is helping or contributing in fixing the bridge that connects teachers and students. Kaya sa online distance learning, uh, one of the, I, I guess, tools that, that would connect teachers and students are yung pag-utilize po natin ng uh, learning tools or digital learning technology. Ayan po. So without that, mahirapan tayong ibigay sa students yung gusto nating ituro. And if there's a problem, in that bridge that connects teachers and students due to physical limitation, due to pandemic, then doon ako gusto, doon, doon, doon ko gusto mag-focus po. So yun, yun po yung topic ko. Doon ako na kumuha ng idea of my topic for this action research. So allow me to present my action research na. Ayan. So when I mentioned a while ago to trust the process, ito po yun, yung PDSA model. So akala ko talaga nung una, madali lang siya. And when I review literatures, when I plan and conduct my study, medyo nagkakalat po yung ideas ko. So, wala kong focus in the first few weeks talaga. Miss Janet actually knows that. Ayan. So, when I present video, hindi ko nagamit yung ibang templates. Ayan. So, yun pala may purpose sila in the future. Yung mga templates na binigay po ni na Doc Trudente, ni Doc Ag Ag Aguha, may mga purpose sila for future uh, references. Ayan. So, ayan. So, trusting the process can help you focus dun sa goal talaga ng activity, which is in this case, in this program, star program yung pag-produce po ng paper. So, I will align the presentation of my paper in this model. So, introduction is the P, the plan. Methodology is the D, S, yung results and discussion. Of course, yung A, yung A, yung impact and recommendations for 
future researchers po or beneficiaries of my study. Ayan. So, here. So, I try to look for literatures. Ano yung naging impact ng COVID-19 sa education? So, we know that there are uh, schools who actually closed and the closure of schools actually have an impact on the following based on these studies. Achievement gap, academic performance, dropout rate, and long-term social and economic impact. That's why yung study ko po focuses also on determining the performance of the students in my class. Actually, hindi pa naman siya nangyayari, but this analysis were projected based on the studies related to the effects of the seasonal learning studies, yung class suspension or school closure due to weather and natural disaster, absenteeism. So yung mga studies related to that, may mga effects po sila sa mga variables na to. How much more kapag nag-close talaga ng matagaling school due to COVID-19? So mas malala siya. So without, uh, without solution mitigating these challenges, baka may mga problems talaga tayo in the future, not just in academic sector. So ano yung mga academic response po? So I simply focus sa Philippines. So yung sa DepEd po, they provided us with the basic education learning continuity plan. Ito yung mga options natin for learning modality. And this current study adopted the home-based online distance learning. So yun po yun. So as I mentioned a while ago, the abrupt transition to online distance learning as a, as a learning continuity plan in response to COVID-19 pandemic opens an opportunity for technology-assisted education. So and today, uh, designing appropriate instructional materials come with great ease brought by technological advancements, yes. And in times like this, adaptation, uh, adoption or utilizing digital learning technology addresses the physical limitations of delivering the lessons. It allows the students to continue learning anytime and anywhere. So, yun. recently, the adoption of various digital learning technologies became popular in which it's an integration into learning environment help achieve the desired goals, learning process, learning outcomes of activities. So, yun na po yung hiningi ko sa inyong sagot kanina. Ayan. So, kasi, utilizing digital learning technology may provide us some good news. It addresses limitations or addresses physical limitations. However, may mga barriers or challenges that can be expected upon utilizing that. And some of you actually answered this. So, yun. Kagaya po, una, technical support. Okay, so may strongly disagree uh, na technical support. Maaring uh, challenge yun or factor that contributes doon sa mga challenges. Okay, meron ding faith in technology, excessive workload. Yung laman mismo nung, nung platform or nung um, learning instructional materials, e-learning tools, baka sobra naman na overwhelming na sa students. Ano po? Ayan, provided may other subjects pa sila, medyo unstable yung internet connection, yung area nila, may calamities pa. So ang dami, tapos yung iba nag, uh, sa umaga, tumutulong sa parents. So ang dami nating mga issues that might hinder the full, uh, yeah, that might affect the full potential offered by the digital technology. So kailangan nating i-address yung issue na yun. Kasi sabi ko nga kanina, I would like to contribute doon sa problem on fixing the bridge that connects teachers and students sa online distance learning. And, and I founded my study in this line, sa introduction ko. So therefore, the success of online distance learning in the Philippines can be determined by understanding how students perceive e-learning tool features. And furthermore, creating a mechanism based on the factors that influence students' belief in e-learning. And lastly, by understanding the student's attitude towards using the digital technology. So yun po yung focus ng action research ko. So therefore, I came up with these uh, objectives and research framework po. So kung medyo mabilis po, uh, please uh, interrupt me anytime. Ayan. So first, uh, actually, ito yung framework. Uh, first, I will be asking the students or interviewing students regarding sa design factors that affects their attitude towards the use of uh, digital learning technology. And I will be using that design factors to to align the development of my uh, learning tool, which is called the Google Forms-based lesson playlist. Then after that, uh, I would like to know how the students viewed the Google Forms-based lesson playlist, yung uh, e-learning tool namin, based doon sa uh, design factors nila, yung system quality, 
perceived ease of use, perceived self-efficacy, and perceived usefulness. So I would like to know that we will be identify, examining that using mean and standard deviation. After that, I would like to know which among these design factors uh, really influence the attitude of the students. And lastly, I would like to know if the students have a positive attitude towards the use of the digital technology due to these design factors. Does that attitude mediate uh, these design factors to their academic performance? So kasi nga, uh, gusto ko rin malaman kung may effect talaga yung uh, design factors sa performance. Kasi nga, may mga challenges tayo due to pandemic, ayan, physical limitations and all. So yun po yung focus ng study ko. Ayan. And for the common reference of everyone, this is how I define digital learning technology in my study. Uh, it refers to a teacher-designed e-learning tool that enables students to access digital material, participate in the class synchronously and asynchronously through the teacher's assignments, evaluate learning through evaluations, and obtain feedback. Ito yung pinaka or definition that I based my definition. And also in my study, it's very important. I also learned from the study to, to establish the construction of the paper, the proposal of the paper in a certain model. Po. So in my study, uh, I based my research framework on the extended technology acceptance model by Fatima et al. 2015. Wherein, doon ko din po kinuha yung mga themes generated in the thematic analysis. So I aligned the themes generated in the interview doon sa model po ni Fatima. And I used the design factor terms on the study by Sanjani. 2017. So I'm not going to be delving much on the review of literature, but I share my experience doon po sa pagkandak ng literature review, which ended me writing a lesson plan <laughs> sa paggawa po ng literature. So kung gusto nyo rin pong hiramin to, so you have my approval naman po. So I entitled my lesson plan as Next Generation Literature Review Analysis. So may mga experience pa ako dito, and which I would like to share with you. So ito yung mga steps na ginamit ko talaga kasi medyo time consuming pala yung pag-review pag ng lit. But along the way, in my journey po sa STAR program, I was able to come up with these three steps and generated my template sa pag-literature review po, pag-review ng literature. Ayan. So I called it thematic analysis grid. Okay. May kaparehas po siya sa studies pero hindi po ko siya ganito ka-detailed. Actually, I started with a very ugly process po ng conducting a literature review. Allow me to show you that ano po, yung Yung mga ko. So I started with this. I hope you can see this document. Ayan. So ito po, ganito po kapangit yung una kong draft. Ayan. Annotated bibliography pa yung tawag ko. Ayan. Kalat-kalat siya. Ito yung mga references. Ayan po. So medyo makalat. So yung second ko po, ito siya. So medyo gumandala yung file name. Pero ganun din yung style. Nagkaroon lang siya ng parang partitions like what are the main arguments? Nayan. Pero nahirapan pa rin po ako talaga mag 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 kumaga mag synthesize tong laman nito kasi nga medyo hindi ko siya makita ng buo. So la and finally, uh, ito na yung pinaka uh, hindi naman polished kasi mas maganda yung presentation ko sa inyo ngayon. So ganito ko siya ginawa. So ito yung citations, purposes and approaches. Ayan po. So I followed the thematic analysis approach kung paano mag-literature review. Ito yung natutunan ko sa STAR program. So after that, I have a discussion here. Ayan, kaka-copy-paste ko lang to sa chapter 1 ko sa literature review tapos ipaparaphrase. So automatic, wala ng plagiarism dito kasi ito na yung synthesis nung na-analyze ko dito. Ayan, I also realized yung, so through my journey here actually, ito yung medyo problem po talaga, especially me as a research teacher. Dito na-clarify yung, uh, yung confusion ko between conceptual and uh, theoretical framework with this uh, process. Ayan. So, yung theoretical framework pala, yun yung basis ng study mo. However, yung conceptual framework, it yung tinitest mo sa study. So, I, I, I guess the, the conceptual framework is the synthesis nung ginawa mong review of literature based dun sa theory na ginamit ng mga previous researchers. Kaya sa study ko, ito yung gusto kong i-prove kung nag-work ba siya. Ito yung parang conceptual framework. Ito yung framework that's different from the frameworks of the study. However, founded in a theoretical framework. Ito yung natutunan ko sa journey na to by spending time sa pag-aaral ko kung paano mag mapadali yung literature review in the future. And if and also, in this... Sorry po, medyo mabilis. I'm just excited. 
sa 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 journey din po namin sa Star Program, we were taught doon sa isang technology that aid us sa paglit pagliv ng literature, yung publish or perish po. So, na-prepare ko na open ko na yung app dito. Ito po yung publish or perish. Ayan. So, mag-type ka lang po dito ng topic, for example, digital technology. Lalabas na po yung mga related literatures. Ayan, marami po sila. Cancel ko na lang kasi marami yan. Ito po yun. So, ang dami nilang lumalabas. Though yung iba hindi open access, though very helpful sa para tulungan ka ng technology na hanapin yung mga literatures related to, yours, to your proposal. Also, I use Mendeley. Ayan po. So yung Mendeley po, gumawa na rin po ako ng video niyan para sa inyo. So you can actually access that to this link. Bit.ly JF LP4. So sabi ko nga, hindi lahat yun ay survey forms. Ayan. So one of the good things of this, ito po yung uh, rinay kong parang YouTube channel, pero hindi ko na, 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 na continue right now. Ito po yung isa sa content nun, yung scenario ko sa inyo. Sometimes, Ay, ang kagandahan po nito is yung, yung automatic po na generate yung citations at saka yung bibliography. So, hindi ko na po papakita yung buong video kasi mahaba siya. But I just want you to appreciate na pag na-click po natin yung insert bibliography here, automatic na lilesen yung time na time consumption natin sa pag-write ng bibliography kasi automatic na siya. So wait for it. Ayan po. So yun. So that's very helpful po. And we also asked, uh, that's also one of the lessons embedded dun sa learning playlist namin. Okay po. So ito po yung experience ko sa writing literature reviews. So I hope it helps you guys. Ayan. So ito yung methodology ng study. So sabi ko ngayon setting po namin is home-based online distance learning and I utilize mixed methods design, sequential exploratory mixed methods design. So for qualitative phase, I also ask 14 students to to participate sa sa interview. And actually I have three sections so I decided to have five students per class. Yung isa po hindi naka-attend due to complication sa sa conflict sa time. So I only have 14 students. Kaso late ko lang na-realize na ang, ang gagaling po nila sumagot. So, nahirapan po ako pag, sa pag-transcribe. <laughs> And nahirapan po ako mag-transcribe nung sinabi nila. Ito yung ilan sa mga sagot kasi nila. Imagine that. And 14 po sila. So, nahirapan po ako mag-transcribe. So, what, what I want to share with you, kasi alam naman po natin kung paano yung, method, kung ano yung methodology, is kung paano ko ginawa yung pag-transcribe. So, I really find ways kung paano ko i-transcribe yung napakaraming sagot ng bata. So, what I did is I was able to look for this Uh, video. Tapos, pwede pala tayo mag-transcribe po sa Word Online. Ayan, Microsoft Word Online po. So, medyo mabagal lang siya ngayon. Papakita ko lang po yung feature kasi uh, naka-record naka po yung video at minsan hindi ko pa maintindihan yung salita ng bata. So, kailangan kong i-replay ayan, from time to time. So, ito po siya. Medyo mabagal lang po. Sorry. Ayan. Ayan. So kung nakikita niyo po yung dictate, andito siya. So very helpful po sa akin lalo pat dalawa yung uh, ginawa kong FDG, uh, FGD rather. So if you click dictate, may lalabas po diyan transcribe. So pag ko po yung transcribe, automatic po. Uh, I-upload ko lang yung video ko and in a few minutes, lalabas na po yung mga ano ng bata dito. Yung translated, ay uh, yung, 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 yung video recording translated into words. Ayan po. So yun, very helpful. And for the after the qualitative phase, of course, uh, in-improve namin yung uh, learning tool, yung Google Forms Space Lesson Playlist. Anong oras na po ba? 10.34. Ayan, yun. And after improving that, uh, tumuloy na po ako dun sa, sa, sa framework ko. I would like to know kung how did my students view the lesson playlist based on these design factors and yung sumunod po. Okay. So I have 25 uh, 105 students and to measure yung design factors yung system quality perceived ease of use perceived self efficacy and perceived usefulness I adapted the questionnaire of Fatima et al and for the grades of the students the performance I simply add the scores of the students obtained from the assessments done sa form 
tapos converted them to percentage. Ayan. Tapos sa data analysis po, medyo na-challenge pa ako dito kasi I know na yung action research po talaga ay hindi dapat gumagamit ng complicated stat analysis. So initially po, doon sa abstract na nakita nyo po sa post, ay indicated there uh, hierarchical multi multiple regression. So however, when I presented my paper po kasi, uh, may mga nag-comments na hindi daw po yung appropriate, particularly doon sa model na tinitest ko. And since medyo marunong naman po ako dun sa suggestion nilang test, uh, ginamit ko na po. Bali, yung sinabit kong paper dun sa conference, I changed the hierarchical multiple regression dun sa suggestion po ng mga statisticians na nakausap ko. Kasi I'm a member, active member po ng PARSU and uh, they also suggested na ito yung gamitin. And it confirms also dun sa review of related literature na sabi dun, the best tool talaga to analyze data, especially if the data talks about, uh, if the data was obtained and refers to the acceptance of technology, ito yung pinaka best tool, powerful tool. Okay? Especially kapag ginamit siya sa academic uh, context. So ito po yung ginamit kong software. Ayan po. So now let's proceed to the results. So when I interviewed the students, ito po yung binigay nilang sagot sa akin and ito yung mga generated themes. So nabanggit ko na po kanina sa framework ko, system quality. So they said that the tool should be, so, so, so that the students have a positive attitude towards the use of e-learning tool, dapat quality po yung content. It supports other e-learning tools. Okay, it's free to navigate. So mamaya po, uh, I will give time to, to explore yung isang sample po ng ating playlist. So you can actually access the playlist using this link. Ayan. So, nandito na rin po siya. So, pwede niyo pong gawin ngayon while listening. So, explore niyo po yun. Okay. And I also created a video kung paano po gumawa nito. O, di ba? Wow. <laughs> Sana makatulong po yun. Okay po. Okay. So, dapat wala po siyang unnecessary features according to one of the responses of the participants in the FGD. Ayan. Dapat naka-organize po yung materials. And it should be accessible. And also, not just in one location yung materials, but also in different devices. And easily manage and control. So the general idea of this second row here is, or the third row is, easy to use, friendly user. Ayun siya. Not time consuming. Especially yung mga bata kasi minsan may interruption, an, uh, uh, unexpected interruption sa pow uh, power outage or minsan internet. Okay. Perceived self-efficacy. So the technology should support uh, the students in carrying out the tasks, yung mga learning objectives ng lesson. Okay, should be flexible in online and offline. Okay, mayroon din pong clear instructions, expectations. And may sabi din ng iba, sana mayroong downloadable supplementary materials for, for offline learning, especially dun sa mga mahihinang internet access. And perceived usefulness. So basically, it supports learning. Tapos there should be an analytics that, immediate, that provides feedback for improvement. Yan yung po yung reason kung bakit we will be conducting a synchronous meeting uh, once in a while doon sa asynchronous discussion po namin. And contain only appropriate number of activities. Ito po yung ina-address niyo yung workload. Okay po. So ito yung definition. So yung system quality, it refers to the student satisfaction in the overall features. Access, uh, content, quality, system interactivity, navigation, adaptability in the ODL context ng tool. Yung ease of use naman, ito yung degree to which a person believes that using a particular technology would be free from effort. So, dapat friendly user siya. And I hope, pag, pag in-access nyo po yung link na to, friendly user talaga siya. Okay, though, magkaroon kami ng parang first meeting po, sa first meeting namin, orientation on how to use this. Perceived self-efficacy, the user's level of belief to perform the tasks necessary to achieve the required outcomes. At yung degree to which a person believes that using a particular system would enhance his or her job performance, yun po yung perceived usefulness. Kung napansin po nyo yung isang, dalawang definitions dito, medyo old, Davis 1989, siya po kasi yung pinaka-proponent talaga ng technology acceptance model na ini-improve lang siya ng mga uh, researchers po. Ayan. So, ito po yung ilan sa mga answers ng students, notable answers. Sabi nila, one of the best qualities in centralizing it is, is centralizing it, sorry. Ayan po. It's referring to the instructional materials. We should have a priority of features that we can display as well as the familiarity of the platform or the tool. So one of the major factors that really affects my attitude towards the use is ease of use and of digital tools. When I say ease of use, I mean that it's presented in such a way that it's not complicated, not 
a lot of necessary features included. Yung enough lang to guide the students navigate and perform the tasks. And isa pa, the activities to be done and the materials that should be posted on, I prefer them to be direct and straightforward to the point like I want them to show what the students want to learn, what they aim for. So yun po, ito yung mga sagot ng mata. So allow me to, to, to direct you guys dun sa... Uh, sa nakikita pa ba yung screen ko? Sorry. Yes po. Okay. Yung nandito po ako sa sample lesson playlist. Ayan po. So I hope you can see this po. Ayan. So just go to the link na binigay ko kanina. So balik po tayo sa presentation. Ito po yung link. gg.gg Sorry, iba na no. Hindi siya naging consistent. Nauna kasi itong ginawa ko. Uh, slash GFLP. Ayan po. gg.gg slash GFLP. Ayan. So, sorry, wait lang po. Ayan. So, ito po yung isa sa sample playlist ko. Siguro lagyan ko nila ng email address. So, ito po yung sinasabi nila na gusto nila makita kagad yung targets, learning targets, yung mga requirements, and of course, yung expectation. Kung ilang oras siya. So, in this case, two hours. But that does, two hours siya, pero... Uh, for one week po ito or two days. Kasi meron lang po kami 30 minutes to meet with our students every day. Or, yeah. Pero two hours po yan, so they can actually work that in the morning. Kasi ang schedule lang po namin is afternoon. We only have 30 minutes per class to meet our students in the afternoon. So free sila sa morning. So they can actually spend like 30 minutes in the morning for two days. So that completes two hours. Kasi we also have to consider the activities of the other subjects. So ito po yung tinatawag namin playlist navigator. So you can explore this later po. Okay, so ito yung student information. Ito po yung uh, differentiated activities. So open lang natin isa. Ayan. So inaline po namin to sa mga interview namin sa students. So ito po yung lesson. May video po naka-embed. Tapos meron po kami uh, yung sinasabi ng downloadable. So kung hindi stable yung internet nila. So whatever uh, presented on the video, ito po yun. So, ginawan po talaga namin siya na write-up. Kasi Microsoft Excel naman yung ginagamit ng bata for data. Uh, by the way, I'm teaching research. However, we cannot continue with the data analysis, uh, data collection kasi due to pandemic. So, pinark muna namin yung activity task na yon and we ask the students to say, uh, we teach the students to analyze the data. Ayan. So, kami na rin naghanap ng mga data online. So, ayan po. Okay, for example, this one, may mga data kami present. So, yun yung mga accessible materials. Automatic one na. Okay, we just ask the students to perform what is presented on the video. So, meron pong kami tinatawag na go to save and exit. Okay? So, pag sinabit po ng student to, automatic they can go back to this later po. Okay? Basta i-click lang nila yung uh, save and exit. So, yan yung aming uh, way to address yung interruptions. Or, kunyari, si, si student, uh, bigla siyang tinap ni parent to, you know, to supervise his or her uh, sister, so pwede niyang i-save and exit and continue this later po. Ayan. So hindi po talaga naka-required lahat ng activities dito. So that they have a chance to go back later. Also, uh, I would like to show you then for the last... Sorry. Ay, bakit ba? Ayan. Doon sa... Yan, mga differentiated activities. Minsan dalawa lang, depende doon sa uh, level of difficulty ng topic. So, ayan, I only have few minutes po. Sorry, wait lang. Back to homepage tayo. Uh, doon po tayo sa part 4, yung exit ticket and self-evaluation. So, dito po, tinatanong namin yung bata kung how they, uh, kamusta sila with respect to the learning targets presented doon sa una. Tapos, during our synchronous meeting, we will address this. We will show the graph, the analytics, and we will address yung mga problems. So, meron kaming uh, short discussion, focusing only doon sa problems ng bata. Kung ilan yung maraming may mali dito, and some of them are even messaging us privately, ayun po. And also, we ask the students consistently if they have questions. Okay, and ito yung feedback namin nila sa playlist. Kamusta po? Ayan. So that we have a room to improve yung aming next playlist kasi marami kaming playlist na ginawa for the whole term. Ayan. So this also helped me uh, collect uh, collect data 
para doon sa uh, to validate yung mga sagot ng bata dito sa uh, interview sa focus group discussion. So yun po yung sa first part. So bibilisan ko na lang po yung second part. Ayan. So that's why we also identify yung mga realities ng students at home, ano yung ginagamit nilang devices, ano yung satisfaction nila sa internet. Ayan po. So medyo konti lang talaga extremely satisfied at mayroon po tayong slightly satisfied and not satisfied at all. So that's the reason why we had those content sa playlist namin. So explore nyo na lang po later. And I also created a video on how to create this form. Okay? And familiar ba sila sa Google Forms? Why I use Google Forms? Kasi mabilis po yung school, pag-open namin ng school ng academic year, July 6. So kailangan ma-address muna namin yung problem connecting teachers to students. So ginamit ko muna Google Forms. So marami talagang ibang comments sa playlist pero we, I would like to to improve yung quality ng playlist namin para at least kahit papaano at less time preparation kasi at least maganda yung service na naibigay namin sa students. Okay. So ito po yun. self Asia, it can be accessed anywhere, anytime, may real-time feedback and may differentiated instructions appropriate only to the learning uh, objectives. Okay, ito yung parts that I showed you a while ago. Ayan po. So nine playlists po ang ginagamit namin sa bata. May exit ticket po kami. We're in the comments and feedback to the playlists were provided by the students. At my uh, this the, the nine playlists were admini uh, was administ were administered asynchronously. However, we decided to have one or two meetings a week to discuss the analytics provided po. Okay, so skip na natin to. Ito na yung tour natin kanina sa playlist. So sa sa quantitative phase naman po. How did the students view the playlist in terms of the design factors? So, so far, maganda naman yung kanilang evaluation. And I used this range po, yung 1 to 1.75. This might be probably different from the others po. Kasi I used this uh, range from Dr. Pimentel. Filipino po siya. Ito yung ginamit yung interval for the 4-point Likert scale. Ayan. So, so far, uh, nasa agree yung level or satisfactory or yun po yung rating ng students with respect to the playlist in terms of the design factors. I also included their performance here, which is 91.91, which is advanced. So, ang ganda nung naging result nung kami, uh, uh, term one sa, sa subject po ng research. So, later po, if time permits, I will show you output sa students. So, yes, system quality. The students are satisfied with the quality of the playlist. Perceived ease of use. The students find it easy and user-friendly. Uh, perceived self-efficacy, the students showed confidence in using the technology in carrying out the tasks. So natulungan sila ng technology tool, yung, yung tool to carry out the tasks. And sabi nila, it enhances their job performance. Okay, based doon sa mga analytics provided by the playlist. And yun po. Ah, sorry. Ayun, ah, attitude rather. Uh, attitude. So the students showed a high and passive attitude towards the use of the playlist. Ayun. So ito po yung result nung uh structural equation modeling ayan so mag maganda yung result niya pero same lang naman siya doon sa regression po so according to this which of the, the design factors really influence the attitude of the students so according to my study po lahat po sila actually okay supported po sila so great less than 0 0.05 less than 0 0.01 ayan and what is notable here is which is the most influencing one yun siguro yung gusto nating malaman so base here is yung perceived ease of use. Yung easy to use po is the strongest predictor. Predictor po talaga siya. Okay. So it predicted the attitude of the students. So ito yung may pinakamalaking uh, influence sa attitude ng student followed by the perceived self-efficacy. Ayun. So then we have system quality and as perceived usefulness and system quality. So siguro hindi sila more into the aesthetics. Ayan po. <laughs> Ayan. Tapos, yung pinakahuli po, baka nag, medyo not supported na kalagay po na yung attitude. Ayan. Does the attitude of the students towards the use of the playlist affects their performance? Nakalagay doon not supported po. Hindi daw po. So, my interpretation here is this. Uh, the students have or had a positive attitude towards the use of the playlist. However, if the challenges arise due to adapting the e-learning tool, the student's performance is not significantly affected. So ang ang idea ang naisip ko doon, ang, ang analysis ko, yung students, they they have a high attitude towards the use of technology. However, sabi nga natin kanina, we are expecting challenges in using technology. So despite 
uh, despite the barriers in using this technology, nagkaroon ng internet interruption, power outage, and other challenges in using the technology, hindi po affected yung kanilang academic performance. So that means uh, the utilization of the playlist in online distance learning is effective in addressing the digital technology but in, yeah, which ensures the student's performance. So, yun po. So, ang ganda nung naging result nung first term namin, uh, maganda yung uh, naging result nung sa pagtanggap ng students towards the, the, the utilization of the Google Forms-based lesson playlist. And furthermore, uh, their performance was not affected every time meron pong challenges, uh, uh, experience upon using the technology. So, yun po yung na... na 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 to find out ko in this action research which i guess it addresses yung nakita kong problem which connecting the students and teachers by fixing that bridge ayun so sa siguro ang maganda mag ang impact na lang ng aking paper is to collaborate with the the charmers po okay siguro we can collaborate to design your own uh, playlist and gamitin natin sa iba't ibang students okay sa public private uh, ibang uh, nat uh, profile po ng students natin para ma ma malaman natin kung ano yung extent ng acceptance ng students toward the this kind of playlist. Okay? So yun. And of course, ayun po. So yun yung uh, recommendation ko. Of course, also examine the applicability of the tool. To, yun, different students, learning different learning modalities. Ayan. And kung gusto nyo makita yung ibang outputs, hindi ko na rin po ipapakita ng buo kasi nga press tayo ng time. So ito po yung ilan sa mga videos. I also asked permission from the students. I-papass forward ko na lang po. And I hope you can hear the sound from your end. Good day, Sir Fritz. My name is Mikael yeah. Kahn. Ah, wait okay, lang po. Okay. So, uh, ito yung binigay naming activity sa kanila pala. Uh, this one. Ayan. So binigay namin sila ng activity. So ito yung activity namin. So... We gave them a situation, we gave them a question and a data set. All you have to do is to perform a, a, an analysis to that data so that they will be able to answer this question. So ito po yan. Yan. So ito po yung ilan sa output po namin. Start with the labels. I'm going to be starting with the first column, with yan the po. first row. So skip ko na lang. Um, and then let's get the sum. All of the purchase. So, so actually, know, that's the house price per unit area. So, since we're using so actually, labels, they were able. I'm, I'm so happy because uh, nagamit nila yung mga pinipresent namin sa video. Yung video po kasi demonstration siya ng lesson ng 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 skill uh, skill demonstration kung paano maganalize ng data. Ayan. So parang ganito. They were able to defend for the second summative assessment and research was this one. So here, uh, the data set um, was given to around 1,300 respondents, which were Oracle independent variables. Those are based on the so hypothesis, and this is the alternative hypothesis because that was the purpose of the students for us to the narrative that we would use. This ANOVA test actually does um, exactly what so, the... Kung baga, si bata na po yung gumawa nun based doon sa video po. So I, I'm so happy na nakatulong. And one also of the activity that I would like to show you that's very helpful po ngayong term sa amin is isa lang siguro, allow me to share it. Ayan. So the students were able to come up with... Medyo uh, pangit yung... Ano. Format, sorry po. Siguro lang, ito. So sa playlist po, may binigay din kami mga activities wherein they are tasked to write a sample chapter 3 and chap sample chapter 4. So ayan. So ito yung guide. And in the end, they were able to write chapter 3 and chapter 4. Ayan po. So ang naging reference po kasi nito, gumawa kami ng parang mini-study that we would like the students to uh, no, no, not this one. To... Ayan po, gumawa kami ng study na ginamit mismo namin yung data ng bata. So, in the previous learning playlist or lesson playlist, kami yung naghanap ng data. Ngayon, all throughout the class, uh, pinapasagutan, may pinapasagutan kami sa bata. Yun yung uh, 
regulated learning, self-regulated, which is one of our studies as well in this uh, in term one. So yun po yung mga sample outputs. And if you want to see them, I will, I'm so happy to, I will be happy to share them with you po. Okay? So right now, yung mga students ko, uh, nasa data analysis ng kanilang experiment, uh, experimental research, scientific research. So marunong na po silang gumawa. Ayan. So ito na yung sample output nila, which we are collaborating for this term. So very helpful siya. Kaya probably it just simply proves na naging successful po yung implementation namin sa uh, sa term 1 nung paggamit po ng Google Forms Space Lesson Playlist. Ito po yung mga references ko if you want to use them for your papers as well in the future. Ayan po. So I hope I was able to share a very uh, nice learning experience in my journey in uh, STAR program po. Okay, so that's all. Charmers, thank you so much for your time and listening to my presentation. Okay. okay. Thank you, Sir Fritz. I just uh, have to stop the sharing. Okay. Yes. Uh, so now uh, I will call on our second. No? Uh, Ma'am Suset Balgos, are you ready to share your screen now? Good morning, everyone, uh, fellow educators, Dr. Prudente, Dr. Aguha, and Dr. Dita. I am Suzette Balgos of Dela Salzabel. And uh, what I would like to share with you are my personal experiences when doing this research. Okay, that's why this presentation is as much uh, my star journey as the process that went into the completion of my action research, which is entitled Effectiveness of a Reflective Module um, towards students' responsible use of social media. Okay, so Sir Fritz mentioned a while ago about the STAR program that we had, and uh, I was privileged to have been part of that and had undergone mentorship by Dr. Prudente and Dr. Aguha. Thanks to Ms. Janet also for coming up with this commendable project. So why did I join? Okay, with the transfer of the library and the testing uh, research units under the academic services department, which I had, I was already germinating the idea of a research commons as a res uh, department initiative. And if I have to propose this to our president and enjoy my colleagues and the rest of the community to actively participate, then I must roll up my sleeves and get into the fray, so to speak. Personally, to be honest, um, I just wanted to be challenged intellectually, major selfish, no? Admin work, especially during the pandemic, has become um, physically draining because I'm constantly in online meetings and you know how it is with online meetings, diba? It's so tiring. I just want to do something different that can stimulate my neurons. So why the topic on social media? Why is that significant to me? Um, our school also offers night high school. And when that ed mandated the teaching of MIL as a separate subject in um, senior high school under the K-12 curriculum, we did not have enough teachers who qualified to teach that. Because I went through the training in media literacy and education under the Philippine Institute of Communications in Asia and have been raring to go back to the classroom to teach. I volunteered to teach MIL in the night school and have done that for the past three academic years, not five. Dr. Uh, Doctora Bing mentioned a while ago, uh, a while ago when she introduced me five years now, three three academic years pa lang. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm sure by now you're already familiar with the PDSA model, no? That the past charmers have used for the research presentations. I will follow the same model of plan, do, study and act, okay? So if you look at the MIL course content in DepEd's curriculum guide, you will notice that it focuses more on mass media and has few references to new media, a part of which is social media covering a wide range of topics. The course is offered uh, in only one semester for a period of 80 hours, I think. No? With a limited time, the topic on social media is not given emphasis and the students miss out on the importance of understanding its impact on oneself and in knowing how to use it responsibly. Alam nyo naman our teenagers nowadays, diba? they, 
they rant, um, they usually rant on social media. So given our students and their generation's apparent attraction to social media, I saw this as a possible topic for my action research. Wala akong ibang maisip at that time eh. Okay, so what did I do next to get the bigger picture? I started reading up and reviewing the related literature. Literature Actually, this helped a lot, no? And to help me organize and make sure that I don't forget my, my sources, I copy pasted any interesting information in a separate document together with the necessary citations. Of course, in the end, I didn't get to use everything that I had in that document, but definitely it came in handy, especially when I was already writing my manuscript. Okay, so um, in 2020, an estimated, so what did I find out from these readings? No? So in 2020, an estimated um, 3.6 billion people were using social media worldwide. That's a big number. A number projected to increase to almost 4.41 billion in 2025. Imagine that. So um, just to give you to give you an idea, no? Dollar Hyde identifies the following most popular social media uh, networks with active users. This is worldwide as of January 2019. So Facebook has 2.27 billion users. YouTube has 1.9 billion. WhatsApp, I'm, uh, I hope you are familiar with WhatsApp. It's 1.5 billion. Facebook Messenger, it's 1.3 billion. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us have Facebook Messenger. We're part of that. WeChat, excuse me, um, have 1.08 billion. And Instagram is 1 billion. Okay. Nakakalula lang yung numbers eh. All right. So please note ah, that WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and Instagram are all owned by Facebook. Okay, so as of the third quarter, 2019, Statista lists Facebook and YouTube as most popular social media platforms in the Philippines. Okay, within the same period, Filipinos spent nearly four hours online on social media. I'm sure some of us are into that. So let's get real, okay. All these are interesting information, but reality really bites, okay? We are in a pandemic and all our students, even in the night school, are doing online distance learning. Yan ang kagagawa ng COVID. So what is the plan for instruction? Okay, At the time we were doing the action research, our night school students have yet to take the MIL course during the second semester. So I won't be able to get them as participants because the course is offered to our senior high school day students, I decided to talk with the two MIL teachers, Ms. Gina David and Ms. Liz Palanya, and invite them to be my collaborators. I gave them a run through of the reflective module and also uh, gave, gave them some suggestions as to how the activities uh, can be conducted on ODL. They also gave me some suggestions. The reflective module would allow the students more headway in understanding the benefits and possible problems arising from social media and lead them towards a more responsible use of these social networking sites. So what improvements in student learning did I intend to achieve? Okay, um, with the use of videos and small group discussion of possible approaches towards hypothetical scenarios, students would be able to reflect and gain insights into their own use of social media and hopefully govern themselves well in the future. So quantitative data were collected from the survey questionnaire, which I gave through Google, uh, Google form um, to get the profile of the students use of social media sites and extent of their uh, engagement. Qualitative data were called from the students' written reflections and also from the videos of their discussions on the given scenarios. So, okay, um, medyo masyado ng cerebral, no? Can we take, I'm not sure if we have time. Uh, what time is it? 11, ano? 
but we'll make this fast. This is ano naman. So Sir Fritz, um, can you please help me identify? So let's just have a short game lang. Yes, okay, Mr. for you to identify the logos or the, the um, uh, what's this? The social media icons that I will show. Okay, so just type in um, the, the, the name of the social media that you, you guess no? from the image that I will type. Sir Fritz will be the one to write down. Sino yung first winner? Okay, the winner, siguro, I can give Gcash. Gcash of 100 pesos. All right. So, Sir Fritz, okay. Meron na ba ang sumagot? Yes, miss. Meron po. All right. Sino siya? Si Doc Aguha po. Ah, si Doc Aguha. Siyempre, alam mo yung <laughs> Doc Aguha. Hindi ka Wag ka nang sumali, Doc Aguha. Pinterest, di ba? <laughs> si Doc Aguha may Pinterest. Okay. What about this one? Ano ba? Bakit gumaganon? Eto, alam nyo to, parang letter B. May sumagot na, sir? Wala pa po, miss. <laughs> oh, wala na pa. Wala pa po. May alam Lord. nito. Naku, mga bata, alam nyo, they use this. This is blogspot or blogger. Okay? Dapat familiar, you should be familiar with these icons. Even for your children. Huh? Okay, next. Eto, yung telephone. What's up daw po, sabi ni Miss Sophia. Okay, very good. What's, What's up? up? I'm sure meron kang WhatsApp, Miss. Okay, ito, very, ano to, ha? very common. You should know this. And this is Doon, very... Nauna po si Mr. Michael Bautis. Ayan po. Okay. Sir, pakilista lang ha. Opo. Oh, yes, me okay. sure po. This is Instagram. Okay, ito, yung dalawang ano, faces with with eyes. Diba? WeChat daw po, sabi ni Miss Sophia. O siya uli. Ayun, si Miss Sophia po. Yes po. Miss Sophia, mukhang social, ano, social <laughs> media, ano, ito. This is very popular among gamers. Discord, nice. This. Discord daw po. Sino nagsagot? Ayun, si Sir Sergio. Ayun. All right. Eto. Naka ano yung... Reddit po, Reddit daw. Sabi ni Miss Guavis. Yes. Miss Jenna Dean. Okay. Jenna Dean. Okay. Next. Reddit, Eto, yes. very common. Tumblr. Nauna po si yes. Miss Sophia. Tumblr. And then the last one, yung parang ghost. Mm -hmm. Snapchat. Galing ni Miss Sophia. <laughs> uh -oh. ha, Snapchat po. Nakaapat ba siya? Yes, Miss. <laughs> okay. So please. Sige, uh, Miss, note ko yung names. Search me sa Messenger. Facebook Messenger. Okay? So that I can get your um, details. No? Through Messenger or email me to give me your um, to give me your uh, what's this? Details. Okay, so, all right, nasa na ba tayo? All right, thank you very much for the participants. Medyo ma maalam, you should know the icons because your kids or your students are really into social media. Okay, so, um, as experienced by many, let's continue, let's move on, as experienced by many teenagers, especially by our students at De La Salsobel. Social media have become a means to communicate with their friends and family, an easy source of news, information and entertainment, and a channel to express themselves. However, these virtual networks and communities have also become convenient venues for emotional venting. Na experience namin yan in, ano, I think, July. Uh, peer pressure, and cyberbullying. In fact, experts worry that the social media and texting that have become so integral to teenage life are promoting anxiety and lowering self-esteem. 
a study found that Snapchat, mind you, huh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram all led to increased feelings of depression and anxiety, poor body image, and loneliness. Feeling nila kasi ang taba-taba nila kahit hindi. No? Kasi they compare themselves uh, with others. So, literally left to their own advantage, our students are very much engaged in social media. Problems may arise from their engagement, but can they cope with the pressure? Are they equipped with the necessary tools to handle these problems? Are they ready to fight against the fear of missing out or what they call FOMO? Huh? Uh, you should be familiar with that term. FOMO is fear of missing out and that's very common among our kids. How do they confront a situation on social media that makes them feel uncomfortable? Okay. So this is my improvement theory uh, based on uh, what I initially um, looked into. So if I incorporate a reflective module on social media use in the MIL class, the students will be more aware as to how they engage on these social uh, networking platforms and result in a more responsible and meaningful use. The AR matrix that Dr. Prudente and Dr. Aguha had us uh, do was very useful no, in distilling my thoughts and helped me come up with the following research problems. So these are the research problems that I came up with. Um, Siguro I don't have to read them out. Okay. All right. So the research participants were the 145 grade 12 ABM students. Sila kasi yung may class ng ano eh, um, media and information literacy under Ms. Gina David and Ms. Palanya. Okay. The research instruments that I used were the survey questionnaire consisting of 17 questions, the five reflection questions given after the video showing, and the small group discussions of scenarios using the feeling and options thinking routine. This consists of four questions on identifying, imagining, uh, and saying, plus two wrap-up questions that I um, incorporated there. So for research ethics, the activities for this action research was confined within the asynchronous classroom setting under ODL the identity of all students who participated in the survey and in the actual learning module have been kept confidential and will not be in any way divulged or encoded in any data analysis software. Only the first names or nicknames or coded names which I came up with of the students were used. At the beginning of the study, a general letter was sent you know, to the parents informing them of the conduct of research. <clears throat> The survey composed of 17 questions um, sent via Google Form. Google Form talaga, very helpful. The asynchronous lesson module contained the video entitled Teen Voices that students watched and reflected on by answering the five questions. This was facilitated through TED-Ed, Lesson Creator Platform. Uh, if you're interested, you can look this up. This is a very helpful tool. No? The students were also <clears throat> introduced with the feeling and options thinking routine that were used to guide them as they discussed it in small groups, a given a hypothetical social media situation. I, I made this up, a hypothetical media situation that is problematic. Their discussions and answers to the wrap-up questions were also video recorded via Flipgrid. Flipgrid is another learning platform that you can also look into. They're very helpful and uh, we use that widely in school. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, okay, the quantitative data from the survey were, were analyzed using descriptive statistics. <clears throat> At first, I tried to use uh, SPSS, okay? But actually, it's easier to use Excel na lang. Mag Excel na lang kayo, especially if it's not really that much, no? <clears throat> I had 17 questions, but it was really, it's not really that difficult, no? 
to use in Excel. But I also tried SPSS. Kaya lang with SPSS, you'll have to um, put all the values and all. So para ka na rin nag, ano, um, it's like working on Excel na rin. Okay. The qualitative data, on the other hand, underwent thematic analysis. Now, for the qualitative data, I tried using Quercos. I tried using Envivo. Meron naman siya mga trial, ano, uh, trial use, for trial use. But then, <clears throat> the thing is, I really had a hard time because hindi, you cannot just put the data in. Eh. You'll have to uh, separate each, um, ano, Parang ikaw na rin yung decode So, what I did, I just used, you know what I used? Uh, I, I just used um, Excel. I put in one column the, the what's this, the, the codes for the students' names, and then their, their um, the question, no? sa, sa taas yung question, yung responses nila. And then I tried to see, okay, I, I, I highlighted some some salient, salient uh, ideas in their reflections. And then I transferred it on the next column. And then after that, binasa ko ulit. And then I tried to find common um, themes no, from their responses. And then I, I placed it on the right side. Okay. It's easy also to color code them, which Quercos uh, does. Kino-color code din nila. Color code nyo and then um, kunyari, meron ka ng mga nakitang several, no? mga apat na, na themes. No? More or less, yung, yung pareho yung mga responses nila. Their answers are the same. So, i-ano mo na in one, with one color. So that when you encounter the same responses in the, in the, with the other students, you can already code them. Kung yellow ba siya, kung, kung green siya, or blue. No? It's for me, I found that easier instead of using yung mga ano, en vivo. Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so, um, these are the results. <clears throat> Out of 145 um, current MIL students, 100% of the 103 huh, survey respondents have at least one social media account. Lahat sila meron. <clears throat> 98 of them have Facebooks. But please note, they, they just don't have one. No, some of them have se had several. So 98 of them have Facebook, 94 have uh, Instagram, 93 with YouTube, 90, 76 with Twitter, and 60 with Pinterest. Okay, you may be surprised most of the students have accounts on Facebook. Ah. Related studies show that Facebook is no longer popular amongst uh, teenagers, but they have FB accounts. You know why? <clears throat> so that they can access other social media websites, such as Instagram and Snapchat, and other third party apps and websites, and even games. Okay, so they use their Facebook account to do that. <clears throat> this makes their logging in more convenient for them. <clears throat> okay, so this is how they rank their social media platforms. In terms of engagement, they rank Instagram as their number one choice, followed by Facebook as number two, and Twitter as number three. So why Instagram? Teenagers can post more photos for their followers to see. And they also get to follow celebrities and see the latter's uploaded uh, photos. Tsaka sa Instagram, they don't have their parents as ano, followers. Hindi <clears throat> nila inaano. Sa Facebook lang yun. That's why they don't go into Facebook very much. Okay. <clears throat> All right. A good 73.5% of them check in their social media once a day. 196 percent check in every hour and the students may just be checking once a day but the question should be how many hours do they spend on social media 
So 31.4% of them spend two to three hours on social media. 25.5 spend four to five hours, while 24.5 spend more than five hours. Uh, take note on social media. Alarming, right? <clears throat> so this data gives us a better picture of how much the students engage on social media. So a total of 81.4% of them are on social media for two hours or more. Continuously or intermittently, two hours minimum can pose distraction, especially on a school day, di ba? <clears throat> Okay, so 75.5 of them post content or comments at least once a day. So every day yan, nagko-comment sila. And I'm sure not just once. So if you look at the, the graph, you can see, no, meron pa nga, may 12 times a day, may 6 times a day, no, 17.6% at least 2 times a day. <clears throat> That's how much they, they engage in social media. <clears throat> okay. So what kinds of pictures do they post? 58.8% <clears throat> of them post pictures of visited places, especially when they go abroad, uh, of their friends. No, they post pictures of their friends, 57.8. Family members, 44.1. And selfies, 26.5. Pero siyempre, pagkasama yung friends nila, and ano, selfie na rin yun, di ba? With the family. <clears throat> Okay, so 79.4% or 81 of them share posts that make them happy. Okay, 70.6% share funny posts. 56.9% share inspiring posts. These are posts from their friends. No, they just share them with the others. 48% uh, <clears throat> share posts about upcoming events. Ito yung mga gusto nilang atinan, mga concerts and all. <clears throat> okay. So 83 of them use social media to socialize casually. A big number. <clears throat> Very few sell products. no, And then also to promote an event. Very few. But a good number is just to make friends. So they also accept friends no, to their social media or followers no, to their social media, <clears throat> even if they don't know these people. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Ito ang alarming din. 81 or 79.4% check their social media before sleeping. Before sleeping. So yung mga parents jan you check on your children bago matulog yan they they check on their social media alam nyo to tell you frankly i'm guilty of that no i check before kasi baka merong may nag-message sa akin or anything i'm sure some of you are also guilty guilty of that and what is more alarming also <clears throat> i hope we're not into this 61.8 of them do this upon waking up. They check their social media upon waking up. So even before they rise from the bed, they check their social media. Okay. So based on the above given results, now we can conclude that the students are very much engaged with social media. And whether this engagement is meaningful and that they are responsible in its use is another matter. All right. So in my analysis of their reflections and responses, the data show remarkable insights and realizations to the guide questions given after the video presentation. Uh, so the guide, one guide question was, what do you think are the benefits of social media? So the following themes were identified from the students' common answers. One is to connect, communicate with, and learn from other people. Okay. The second is to express their views about things. You know, our Gen Z generation, 
<clears throat> our Gen Z now, no? um, yung mga students natin in the high school, <clears throat> they can very well express themselves. They have their own political views. They, they have their advocacies, no? and they're very um, strong about those. And they use social media to, to, to express this and spread <clears throat> the word about their advocacies. So um, I'll go back to get information and learn new things. And also um, they want to be entertained. <clears throat> That's the, the fourth theme. They want to be entertained. And all these are expressed in the excerpts as shown. Okay. So these are verbatim to ha. I did not edit this. <clears throat> so one student said, I just, I'll just read one. Social media can create more friendships, allow me to connect with people from around the world, learn more through open conversations with them, and find a middle ground or unified voice regarding an issue. Actually, I, I was uh, very proud of the students. No, they express themselves well. <clears throat> They're very candid about it. All right. <clears throat> So another is the negative effects of social media. That's one question. No? Um, the, the themes that I was able to, to generate was social media can cause stress and anxiety because of the fear of missing out, peer pressure and cyberbullying. <clears throat> that was very um, um, dominant, okay? The second is, to diminish genuine social interaction. They feel that um, their social interaction is becoming less genuine and it's diminishing in terms of um, um, being real no, about, with their friends. And then the third is ca it causes unrealistic expectations of oneself. The fourth is can be a source of wrong information or fake news. No, as we all know. And the fifth is enable criminal activities such as phishing, harassment, extortion, and identity theft. They were able to, to, um, to express those. So one, if I may just read one, no? um, one student said, so if you notice, I coded them. <clears throat> uh, that's 12G, that's the section. And then the sec she's the second in the list. Social media can cause anxiety because of the fear of missing out, cause unnecessary attachment to immaterial pleasures, like um, trying to find out their followers, the likes in their social media, the comments, and then distract a lot from things that matter and may cause addiction to gadgets. Alam ni Leon. So, Insights on how social media can affect their relationships with their friends. <clears throat> so to that question, how can social media affect your relations, relationship with your friends, the participants were able to give meaningful and thoughtful insights as shown in the following themes. One is comparing oneself to others, okay? Number two, hindering them to have meaningful in-person in interaction. Number three, feeling excluded or missing out on things. And number four, making connection easier when they are apart. So if you notice, there are three negative, no? negative um, things no? that they were able to identify and one positive. It only makes connection easier. So one student said, social media can cause anxiety because of, our, wait, tama. Um, it can cause pre peer pressure from society to be a certain way. You can become antisocial. It can la cause lack of uh, spending real time with family and friends and at times very toxic and gives you anxiety. <clears throat> okay, so strategies to use to get the best out of social media. I thought they were able to come up with this, okay? As shown in these excerpts, the students gave well thought out responses to the task, write one strategy you can use moving forward to get the best out of social media. 
And out of the responses, the following themes were identified. Being aware of your feelings about things on social media, that's one. Now, uh, another one is focusing on posts that spread positive vibes and make you feel good, okay? Another one, the third one is being true to oneself and not pretending to be someone you're not. And number four is practicing digital citizenship, which we try to teach our students also. But we should really do that, <clears throat> okay? So I won't go into, to save on time, I won't go into the excerpts anymore. Okay, with the insights of the students on the responsible use of social media, ito, having read through all the, all the responses, I conclude that a reflective module in MIL is effective in equipping the students with helpful tools no? so that they can use social media more responsibly and in a more meaningful way as expressed by four of the participants. Um, according to Mark, <clears throat> What has helped me the most is realizing that I have all the control I want over what I want to see on my wall. Anything that I do want to see, I can easily block out and pay no mind to, and instead focus on the topics and stories that have no negative impact on my health. At least now he knows that. For Gabby, he says, self-control is the best strategy in using social media. It makes us become responsible users which makes it a better and more comfortable space for other people. Social media is a powerful medium and we have to use it responsibly. Another one, <clears throat> I think I can treat social media, according to Rafael, with little regard compared to things that actually matter. I can focus on my hobbies, my future, my career, etc., without the mentality or thinking about followers like the trends, etc. Of course, I can still use social media, but with the new knowledge that I can manage my time and not obsessed with anything that will tear me down. Okay, shadow siya drama. All right. So what reflections have I gained <clears throat> out of this? Okay. So upon reflection, I see um, the need to take an honest look at the school's MIL curriculum plan, and if needed, recommend the emphasis on topics that would impact the students most, such as social media use, digital citizenship. I see this as a really, uh, this is a pressing need no, as I see it. <clears throat> students also need to be equipped with the necessary skills to give them the ability and confidence to be proactive and responsible in the use of social media. And through reflective MIL modules, they can become instruments in making a positive difference in the world. Okay. <clears throat> so what are my plans for continuous improvement? Okay. So taking an honest look at possible problems or gaps in the lesson and how it is carried out in class is vital in order to um, <clears throat> implement an effective and relevant instructional plan. Collaborating with the teachers is key in making sure that the module is implemented as planned. This is very important. <clears throat> Getting the other teachers involved in the improvement of the module will also ensure that this will be used in their succeeding MIL classes moving forward. Because <clears throat> it matters when they, when, when, when they own it, no? <clears throat> Since media and information literacy may be integrated in other academic subjects, not just in grade 12, I plan to introduce this reflective module <clears throat> um, to grade 11 for the second iteration, then to grade 10 for the third. Knowing that our students in these grade levels are very much um, engaged in these social networking sites, conducting this reflective module may also be effective in helping them become more responsible users of social media. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, as envisioned by UNESCO and as practiced in other developed countries, such as in Canada, Australia, and some parts of the world, there should be a strong move in the institutional level to introduce MIL in other grade levels, not just in senior high school. On the national level, the Department of Education may have to consider 
taking a progressive stance. I hope this, this will happen uh, in integrating MIL in the basic education curriculum so that there will be a more systematic shift in our how our students use media and information during the fourth industrial revolution. Okay. So these are my references. Um, you know, I would like to read um, this common sense education. <clears throat> you can be a member of this one. This is a very good resource for modules now on MIL. <clears throat> they have modules for parents as well, and also for teachers. So it's really a very good resource. So more of my references, okay. And then for the last, of course, I would like to thank um, the following people you know, for my acknowledgements, of course, my family for the support and encouragement. I would like to thank also special thanks to Dr. Uh, Maricar Prudente and Dr. Socorro Aguha <clears throat> for being my professors, uh, professors, not really professors, but research mentors. I hope they were my professors when I had my uh, research methods in TAF. I would also like to thank uh, Ms. Gina David and Ms. Palanya no, for uploading the modules into the online platforms and generating the responses in TED-Ed flip, and Flipgrid. You know, if not for them, I don't think I would have been able to conduct this research. Uh, of course, to Ms. Janet for her continued assistance even after the STAR sessions. Anything we need, no, we always message Ms. Janet and she's always there to answer. And to our administrators, especially Brother Bernie, for the continued support to the enhancement of the school's research culture. So as a parting slide, I want to greet you all a Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay. Ayan. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Ms. Suzette. Maraming salamat. All right. We now open the floor. Thank you to the speakers, uh, Sir Fritz, mm. okay, and Mom Suzette for the very insightful sharing of your own work. Okay, we now uh, encourage everyone mm. to uh, participate in the Q&A. If you have any comments or questions, <clears throat> Uh, whatever remarks uh, regarding today's featured lectures, we yeah, we request you to type in or to utilize our chat box. Question ako. I just yes. want to ask the two uh, presenters uh, particular challenges that they encountered while they were doing the action research for the first time and how did they overcome those challenges? Um, challenges. Actually, one challenge, Doc, ano, Doc Bing, kasi nga admin, admin ako, I, I, I don't have a class for this term, no? <clears throat> the night school didn't have um, MIL at that time. And then I couldn't think really of a, something that I can do in class. Mm. Um, yun, medyo naging challenge sa akin yung, yung topic. Mm. It was also challenging yung every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sacrifice. Uh -huh. It was a sacrifice. But then once you started, kasi parang hindi po parang ano? Parang it's very stimulating eh. It's very <laughs> stimulating and very congenial. Then your atmosphere that you know it makes it all worthwhile. Like sometimes Saturdays, I I I ask my kids. No, my, uh, anyway, uh, grown na sila. I ask my kids to cook breakfast kasi hindi ako makaluto since it starts at nine. Diba? So, ganun. And then yung challenge then I guess, yung finding time because nga, ang daming meetings. So, ang nangyayari sa akin ay, what I do sa gabi ako, nagagawa. <clears throat> And sometimes ay hanggang madaling araw. No, kasi pag inumpisahan mo na, tuloy-tuloy na eh. Ang hirap, ang hirap i, ano ba, Hinto, especially when you're looking at materials, pag nagre-review ka ng literature, di ba? Tapos ginaganahan ka na din eh. I think what 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 helped is yung binas, nagbasa na ako agad. And then I try to get yung mga salient points from the readings and then putting it every, in, in one 
document that really helped a lot. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sir Fritz? <laughs> morning po. Uh, good morning din po, Dr. Shirley. Ano po? Ayan. Uh, sa akin naman po, first of all, uh, malikot po yung isip ko yung nagsisimula ko sa action research. <laughs> Pandami kong napupun- nababasang mga topics na nawawala ako sa focus. So that's why I really highly recommend yung pag-follow po talaga ng PDSA model. Ayun po. Uh, secondly, siguro yung yun, yung literature review. Ayan. So, siguro kaya ko mag-comment sa mga works ng bata sa research class ko. However, when I start doing it, hindi ko alam kung paano i-organize. I mean, masarap magbasa, yes. But when the time comes that I have to write everything, nawawala na yung references ko. <laughs> Ayan. So, so, parang there should be a strategy on how to organize everything from the very start. Kasi, time-consuming siya. Eh. So, that's when I learn yung yung pag-create nung uh, thematic analysis grid. Ayan. Actually, gumawa ko ng lesson plan because I was invited to be one of the module writers ng Rex at yun yung submit ko and I improve yung thematic analysis grid. Uh, doon din po. So, uh, nakatuling din po yung pag-attend namin every Saturday kasi nabigyan kami ng mga tools pala that could aid us. Ayan. And even attended yung one evening session yata ni na Dr. Dente po yata yun sa... Uh, thematic analysis using a software. So probably the third is time. Yes po. Kasi research teacher po ako and uh, sa, sa, sa students kasi namin scientific paper, uh, may tinuturo kami nung term one which is yung data analysis. However, yung goal talaga namin why we set aside yung pinaka-major goal ng term one which is data data collection is yun. Uh, we ask the students to to study first data analysis. However, on the on some of our times are actually devoted to ano, looking for some ways on how actually we can continue the studies of the students for term two in data gathering. So nag-uusap kami ng mga partners namin kung ano yung plano namin for term two sa, 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 sa papers ng bata kasi pinark namin siya ng term one. So yun po, doon pa lang nagbabalansin na ako. So probably yes. I guess yung time talaga. That's why yung Saturday naman, very helpful din naman si wife. <laughs> I support you siya. So yun. Uh, nagkakaroon kami ng focus nung Saturday. Though, sa movie talaga hindi kinakaya. That's why Miss Janet knows this, no? Minsan, very thankful ako kay Miss Janet kasi I don't really expect her to reply kahit nag-message ako ng gabi. <laughs> so, I just put the question there in the air kasi I might forget it in the morning. But, I'm so glad, I'm so grateful kasi nagre-reply siya without any, ano, kung baga, go lang. And she's very supportive. Kaya tinawag ko talaga siyang guiding star doon sa star program. <laughs> Kaya thank you oh, well. talaga, Janet. Yeah, and, I agree. <laughs> and po, very accommodating din po si na Dr. Denton. Look, ag, 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 guha po. Ayan. So, yun yung mga challenges namin. Yung, yun po. Yun po yung sa akin, sa case ko po. Ayan. Well, siguro, if, if I may add, yes, naka, nakatulong yung, ano, yung matrix tsaka yung action plan kasi it somehow guided us eh as we go along. So I guess I, I would suggest the the listeners no yung yung mga nandito to also follow that it helped a lot yung action plan and the matrix the research matrix that we did yung workshop natin it was really good Okay thank you po Mrs. Z and Sir Fritz so my follow up uh, question po si Doc Inday okay and sabi niya Uh, now that you have started action research, what are your plans to sustain uh, to sustain the the job? Actually, <clears throat> sa term two, yeah, when I consulted the students, when I presented the the result of my action research to the students, uh, isang naging reason po na, isang naging topic po namin yung uh, platform, yung Google Forms. Though they really like the Google Forms lesson playlist, kasi uh, sila kasi ang dami nilang tawag dito, dami nilang ginagawa sa ibang subjects din. So having one uh, link that will help them identify yung mga tasks na na-miss nila, mabilis sa kanila. However, they also would like to try other platforms then. So ngayong term kasi, ang ginawa ko kasi, I also would like to, to try out other platforms. Gumawa kami ng, ah, gumamit kami ng Microsoft Teams. Kasi sa term 2, andiyan na po, nag, nag, nakahanap na kami ng ways on how to continue the studies of the students for term 2 sa data gathering. And it's more on collaboration. So I explored the use of Microsoft Teams. And hopefully, I'll be able to come up with uh, an action research related to Microsoft Teams. 
especially engaging the students in collaborative activities po. So that's one. Kung baga, nag, ayun, sabi ko kay Miss Janet, nagkaroon talaga ko ng parang enlightenment na maganda pala talagang simulan ang isang term or academic year if you have planned everything from the start. Kung baga, parang mayroon ka ng, pag ka ng action research, parang planado na lahat eh, from the very beginning, ano yung mga strategies mo to deliver your content, and how to, tapos yung monitoring mo sa students from the very start up to the end, mo monitor mo siya na meron kang plan. So, ayun po. So that's, for now, yun yung naisip ko. Ayan. Of course, siguro, to, to, to support the group, yung STAR program, yung CHARM, to, to share what I learned from the, 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 the program po. Very helpful talaga siya. So when I said yung trust the process, yung PDSA model, yun po yung sinabi ni Ms. Josette kanina na yung lahat ng templates nakatulong talaga siya kasi sa dulo doon makikita yung 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 connection nilang lahat eh parang babarbecuehin sila tutuhugin lahat ng templates na yon na it will simplify everything ayun po so i hope i answered the question so. yeah okay. salamat sir fritz um uh, suzet okay so yan ang tanong ni dr aguha how are you going to sustain it yeah hindi yeah, yeah, natin my in my uh, presentation but anyway i guess um sustaining it no we, we've started with the research commons okay i i i hope that will help the other teachers no the other researchers in sustaining what they have started because this is a support group um that can really help them with whatever like it can be technical it can also i mean with hr it can be financial all right so in, in my case, um, in my personal experience, um, how I can sustain it is by, kasi I plan to do it nga in the other levels, in grade 11 and then grade 10. And then what I'm trying, I, I will start um, doing now is to propose that it be included also MIL to be included in the in grade school as well, because there should be. Okay. Aside from the junior high school, there should be also in grade school. If that is the only thing I can do out of this research, no, I, I think I, I, I would feel good that I would be able to start that. I will have to write again another proposal. Okay, thank you, Pa. Thank you. Uh... Can, I, can I just say something? Uh, uh, siguro na uh, kailangan kong banggitin so that all the other administrators who are here will be guided on how the DLSZ model of how they were able to start with the culture of research. They were doing research, the teachers were doing research separately, individually. But then uh, because of this STAR program, nagkaroon ng collective uh, awareness, no? a greater collective awareness. And I'd like to inform the group, the charmers, that uh, Ms. Suzette Balgos, who holds an, an administrative post, actually, no, hindi niya pinamgit eh, siguro, uh, very modest kasi si Mambalgos. Because of the experience, she actually proposed no, the, the establishment of research commons at DLSZ. And uh, the, it's a program, it's a continuing program that will actually address the sustainability of uh, the conduct of action research among uh, DLSZ teachers and even academic and non-academic personnel. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yes. Siguro ang parang gusto kong magtanong doon kasi uh, most of our charmers, actually, yun ang kanilang concern, concern no? Yung mm -hmm. how they can also start uh, their own action research projects in their own schools. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ano po kayong pwede nating ma-advise sa kanila, Dr. Bing? Uh, just now, I'm chatting to uh, our regular uh, charmer, mm -hmm. si mm -hmm. Chonilo uh, Saldon. I mean, she, I mean, he is also... Uh, uh, having this same project, parang mayroon din siyang initiative to, mm -hmm. parang inset training nila on uh, action research. Tama ba, Shanilo? You're still here? Okay. So, uh, any advice siguro or, or, you know, words of encouragement to those who are here and to those who are planning to uh, come up with something sustainable? Yeah. Kasi AR is going to stay, okay, and then yeah. our uh, basic mm -hmm. ed teachers mm -hmm. are, di ba, parang expected to do action research. So ano ang pwedeng gawin ng mga administrators, or if you are not administrators, uh -huh. na lang yung pwedeng initiative ng mga teachers who are here who'd like to start the same project. Siguro Actually, first, ah, yes, ayan. yes, you said, you want to answer that. Uh -huh. Ano lang, Doc, uh, idea lang. Kasi nga, I think, 
um, what's crucial here, no? the reason why it's successful in De La Salle Sobel, because the top management is very supportive. Mm -hmm. Kasi if you don't have that kind of support, para it's so hard to to make it fly. Ba kasi kung iisa ka lang, but then if a teacher no, kung kunyari tanggalin na natin yung support na yon. Kung ikaw talaga pursigido to do your own action research, it's there's a lot of materials in the internet, mm -hmm. on the web that you can really use. Ang dami-dami, as super dami, minsan nga nakakalula na eh. Kung talagang pursigido ka. And then, I would suggest, mag-enroll kayo sa BLSU. <laughs> <laughs> yun po yun. Yan po yun. It boils down to that one. Uh, okay. You really have and to... And be mentored uh, by the Maricar uh, S. Prudente. Pag wala kayong mentor. Uh, wala. Nakagay na right. mentor kayo, si Dr. Aguha at saka si... Dr. Pudente, my God. That's They're very supportive. Lahat na lang ibinigay. They're very generous. Okay. And Thank this you, para online lecture series too is Dr. Bing's idea. So para dun sa mga sabi nila, you know, I mean, so that we can reach out to more action researchers, to more teachers, to more researchers and scholars. Okay. I mean, if they're not able to attend our annual congress o kung walang mga initiatives sa kanilang universities, at least Aral online lecture series can provide that or can assist our basic ed. So, kudos sa inyo, Dr. Bing and Dr. Inday. Okay, maraming maraming. Dr. Lee, yes, maybe po. we need to mention that part of our plan for Aral 2021 is for Dr. Agua and myself to hold uh, ano? training lectures no? for, yes, ano? for the three days. Yes, po. okay. In experience ng De La Salle Subel and other trainees, the trainings that we've had, uh, ita try namin i cover ng three days dun sa Ma May 20, 21, 22 for Aral right. 2021. The Action <laughs> Research Action Learning 2021, that's already the fifth, dahil cancel po ang ating 2020. So it's the fifth Aral Congress, okay, in 2021. It's happening on May 20 to 22, 2021. 2020. So madali lang pong tandaan. May 20. 2020. Yeah, May 20 to 22, 2021. Sana po ay, uh, yeah, I mean, we're hoping that we will be able to do it. But it's going to be fully digital, okay? So it's going to be the uh, fifth Aral Virtual Congress, 2021, okay? And the theme is Action Research in Times of Uncertainty. We will be launching the call for papers anytime soon, so stand by, okay? Uh, any recommendations? So we have uh, from uh, MLS Billen. Any recommendation to simplify AR so that I can be, uh, it can be undertaken or carried out by junior high school students who are interested. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes, Kasi, yeah. Let's admit it's sa ating mga basic ed teachers medyo okay. But, but, but I'd like to believe that, believe that our senior high school students, who minsan sila nga yung napakataas ng mga ginagawa nilang research, ano? Sige. Pero any, yeah, let's simplify it. Any recommendations? Dr. Bing, Dr. Aguha, you can also participate in that. Uh -oh. Remember that action research is about yourself. So you have to teach your students to do self-reflection. What is it in my being a student? Diba? What is it among my practices? Should I consider improving and then they can base it on their personal experiences and then ask other students as well total mahilig sila dun sa ano ang tawag mo dun si set fomo 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 so fear of missing out it, uh, fear, fear of missing out so titingnan nila no so it will be very uh, helpful for the students if they try to examine na rin. Uh, what they need to be, lalo na yung senior high school, because they eventually they will go uh, to college and they will, they will have to think of their career. What do they need in their future career that will help, uh, that will help them become effective learners, no? efficient learners? So siguro dun sa, sa area ng learning can be looked into, like skills, like for example, if, if the student is a STEM class, the STEM student can think about ano yung mga scientific skills or laboratory skills that I need to improve on. Self-reflection, kasi nga, uh, we have to make sure na AR is, a, uh, we have to uh, remember that AR is about improving oneself. So, ganon. 
and then uh, allow them to look at others' perspectives in their own action research and then come up with their own improvement plan about themselves. That can be a good action research. Of course, this, uh, this is just an one, then they can do also other action research that are content related naman, no? to enable them. To, but it should focus on practices. Like for example, uh, in the social sciences, they can think of action research that will make them, uh, that will make them more uh, advocacy, uh, uh, advocacy anong tawag dito? oriented uh, oriented and not, not only advocacy but da dapat may advocacy and action parang ganun so uh, as teachers let's guide them to think about how they can better themselves mm -hmm. ako yun ang tingin ko na pwede nilang gawing action research because remember these uh, high school students are not yet professionals mm -hmm. but a big part of what they're going through is trying to gain experience you know, and knowledge uh, and skills about how they can improve themselves. So uh, for me, I guess uh, it's part of the teachers now to, to guide the students, you know, just like what Dr. Prudente has said, na tayo as educators, as teachers, should, should be the first to learn actual research. No? So we cannot guide our students to do action research if we don't know how to do action research. Yeah, yeah. Point ko. So tayo as teachers, we should be interested in that. No? Kasi tingnan natin, ang nag expect ka ng uh, <clears throat> students mo to come up with an action research when you yourself doesn't know how to do action research. Ano yun? <laughs> An anong... anong philosophy yon So parang, yun nga, sinabi ng mga speakers na, marami ng resource speakers natin na it's up to us. Al alam ko, most of us have been doing changes in, in the way we are teaching. Uh, and kulang lang is documentation. So we start on that. We start on that. Then later on, pag meron na tayong marami ng nasulat, uh, part of our reflections and some observations and the way we teach, siguro, spring spring up kana don to to do an action research and when you are doing now the action research matututo ka natin ng mga estudyante to do the same Kasi basta wag lang natin sila pabayaan na sa bahala ka na gumawa ng action research kahit ako hindi marunong parang hindi ata maganda di ba <laughs> yan po it's an honest to goodness okay <laughs> comments from dr aguha tama po okay guys <laughs> at this point may we request uh miss liz to flash the certificate of appreciation to our uh two featured speakers for today yes may we request dr aguha okay to award the certificate of appreciation to our uh two featured speakers okay, okay. sharing Okay, so De La Salle University, Brother Andrew Gonzalez, FSC College of Education, Bag said, the Salian Institute for Development and Educational Research Leader and Action Research Action Learning Aral, present the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Maria Teresa Zuzet P. Balgos for conducting the DLSU Bag said Leader Aral online lecture series entitled effectiveness of a reflective module towards students' responsible use of social media held on December 14, 2020, 10 to 12 noon via Zoom. Signed, Dr. Raymond C. Season, Dean Bagsed, Dr. Shirley Indita, Director Leader, and Dr. Marika Prudente, Congress Chair, RL 2020. Thank you, Mr. Seth, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Marani, another. Marani. And the next okay. one. Uh, another certificate of appreciation to Mr. Fritz in Ferran for conducting the DLSU Bugset Leader Ara online lecture series entitled Google Forms Based Lesson Playlist Examining Students' Attitude Towards Its Use and Its Effect on Performance, held on December 14, 2020, 10 a.m. to 12 noon via Zoom. Signed, Dr. Raymond C. Season. Dean Bagzid, Dr. Shirley Dita, Director Leader, and Dr. Marika Prudente, Congress Chair, RL 2020. Thank you, Mr. Fritz, well, and congratulations. Thank you, and Mr. Uh, Sir Fritz, for your uh, insightful lectures for today. Okay. Okay, at this point, may we ask Ms. Liz to flash the 
lecture for next Monday. Oh, yeah. So it's developing the, uh, this is De La Salle uh, Zubel. Zubel. Robotics Curriculum through Collaborative Action Research. Ang galing-galing ni, na, na, naridig ko na po siyang mag-lecture. Mag, mag so I hope to see you on uh, Monday, everyone, okay, for our next um, um, Aral Online Lecture Series. So again, thank you very much to the, to the two featured speakers, Dr. Bing and Dr. Aguha, and to everyone who attended today's uh, Aral Online Lecture Series, okay? We'll see you again on Monday, Charmers. Have see you, Charmers. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Shout out to Suzette and Fritz. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. And